Hi guys and welcome back to the second video of today. I hope you all took the time to read the message at the front of the video and uh, the same message will appear at the end of the video sh should you have missed it at the beginning or chosen to skip it. So today uh, for this video I want to talk a little bit about brake lines. Um, I don't plan at any time on doing brake repairs because if you get it wrong I don't want to be sued and there can be serious injuries so I suggest you always seek professional advice when you're fitting anything to do with the brakes but making the brake lines themselves is not a particularly complicated job and you can get fantastic results with just a little bit of practice um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the options that are open to you the tool options that are open to you and then I'll do a demonstration on how you can make a perfect brake line uh, as good as the ones that you can buy from Mitsubishi Direct. So over time of course the brake lines are wearing away, um, rusting away I should say. That's nothing to do with poor quality manufacturing no matter what car you have on the road chances are your brake lines are going to start breaking down after 10, 15, 20 years by the time you've reached 30 years, especially if you're in a damp climate, most of them are rotted away and need replacement. Now, the options open to us are many. Um, there's the cheap option, and there's the slightly more expensive option, and a little bit in between. So if you go to your local uh, workshop and have them fit new brake lines for you, chances are they're going to use copper brake line as a replacement. Reason is... It's extremely cheap. It's very, very easy to fit and requires minimal tools. Now, the reason it's easy to fit is copper's a very soft metal. So soft you can bend it with your hands without any effort at all. And it means that uh, a garage can fit a new brake line very, very quickly, very cheaply and very easily. Um, problem with this is, in my opinion, it doesn't look very good. To me, there's only one way to do it, and that is the original metal way. Um, but of course, if you're on a limited budget and you can't do the job yourself, you may well end up going to a local garage and have them fit copper brake lines. Now, if I had my old family car and it was going to the junkyard in a few years time and I didn't care too much about it, I myself would use copper brake line. It's so easy to use, but that's option one. Second option, if you want to stop the rusting problem, go to a stainless steel brake line. Um, these are slightly more money, harder to work with because stainless steel is much stronger, but you will never have the rusting problem again. Only downfall is it still doesn't look original. However, it does look better than copper in my opinion, so you could go for that if you choose. And the third option, of course, is the one I'm going to go for every single time on these cars. They're getting old, they're real classics, and the more original you keep it, the higher its value is going to be. I know that whenever I look to buy one of these cars, apart from a rust-free body, I then start looking at what's been replaced, what's not original. Now, that's not to say I'm against not using original parts, because some non-original parts are as good as the original parts but the appearance of the part has to at least look original and seeing as you can buy the original brake line and make it look original why not buy that sort of brake line a little bit harder to use few extra tools required um, but still you can get an original brake line look for it now if i show you some comparisons on what you can do this is a genuine Mitsubishi line. Actually, I'll open this for you. Now, originally, when Mitsubishi produced these right at the very beginning, they was using the, uh, the break-ins with the yellow passivate. Then they started going to the zinc-only coating, bright zinc, um, which still looks as good. Um, you can still get the yellow passive eight ends and that's what I prefer to use. So that's an original one that's gone rusty. This is an original one but with the silver ends 
and this is one I reproduced I've not yet put the ends on but we're probably going to do that as part of this video and I'm going to put on the original uh, yellow passivate ends and there's no limit to what sort of brake line you can reproduce this is an original and this is one that I made myself and you can see it almost identically matches the original a little bit more work I can get an exact duplicate of the original so why not make them to look like the original um, bit on the tooling number of different tool options to you some of them you're going to have to buy or borrow um, or rent whatever's there for you some of them you can do without or do workarounds if you're using copper pipe you can certainly do without some of these tools if you don't worry too much about what it looks like you can do away with some of these tools but if you want perfection you're going to need most of these tools so a quick look through what you're going to uh, possibly need to buy number one is a tool to straighten the brake line now if you try to get a piece of curled up brake line and make it perfectly straight not only is it going to take you a long long while but the chances of you getting it perfectly straight again is pretty remote you can now buy this tool on the market and bear in mind this is the original steel line it's much harder to work with to get it straight but if you get it semi straight take off as much as you need then you can put it into this tool and this is quite a brilliant tool once you get the line started still a little too bad at the end there then it'll go through and what it does is as it goes it straightens the brake line and you're ready to go no hard work involved strongly recommend you buy one of these they're not a fortune and it saves you an awful lot of work second option is a method to bend the brake line you're going to need to produce all sorts of different corners and shapes and there is a lot of different tools to do that problem with this type of tool is it's got limited bend angles so you will need to buy one for a small angle one for a medium angle, one for a bigger angle to get all the angles. Now, I haven't come across one yet. I'm sure there's a tool out there that does every single curvature, but I haven't found it. So you have to buy lots of different ones to get all the different angles and shapes and corners. I prefer this tool, which is now available on the market. You only need to buy the one and it has all the different angles all on one i've not yet found a single brake line on these cars that is not covered by this tool and i'm going to show you in a minute how to use it you're going to need a method to cut the brake line which is one of these tools come in small for the little tiny corners you might need to get into or large which is a much quicker tool to use for cutting the brake line I recommend you get both they're very cheap tools and usually come as part of a kit then of course we need a way of flaring the end if you look on the end of the brake line it's flared so we need a way to put that flare in there and for that you've got two options one is a cheaper option and this you can buy as a kit or you can buy individual tools for this to do its flaring I can get this out you release the end you put the brake line in there have i got one i can demonstrate with yes no <laughs> you basically put your brake line in the end of the tool clamp it down if i can get this out leaving a couple of mil or just one mil 1.5 mil out the end then you're going to fit this over the end
like so. Now you're probably going to think, well, he's skipping over this a bit quick. I don't understand what's going on. I'll tell you why I'm skipping over it in a minute. And I will demonstrate it better later. You do that up and it's going to flare the end of the metal for you. But I will explain to you why I skipped over that a bit rapidly. And I'll explain as we go along. So that's how that one works. But if you want the real proper stuff, the stuff that's going to get you the factory finish, you're going to need one of these kits. A little bit more money, but it really does produce fantastic results. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you as we go along. You're also going to need a tape measure. You're going to need a marker pen, a little sharpie or something adjustable spanner or a regular spanner to do up the nuts on the uh, flaring tool and possibly a pair of gloves if you're planning on using steel brake lines like the original. I'm only going to demonstrate the steel one because to me that's the one you should be using to keep the cars as good as new. So what else do I need to tell you? Oh yeah, when you're buying the ends for the brake lines um, remember there's lots of different sizes different size diameter hole down the middle different size thread diameter and different size type thread so make sure you either take an original one into the shop and ask them to um, get one that's exactly the same or take the measurements yourself and make sure you're buying the right ones the most important thing to know is that there's many different sizes all appear to look the same but you want to get the right one so, give me a second to have a drink, and then we'll start looking at how to make a new brake line. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm going to use an original Mitsubishi piece of brake line. Now, it's only a simple piece, but it covers two different angles, and once you've got two angles, that's the same as doing 50 angles on a long piece of brake line. So I don't want to make the video last for hours just by demonstrating the same technique over and over and over on a long, long brake line. We'll just do a simple one. It's going to cover fitting the ends, it's going to co uh, cover cutting the line, and it's going to cover flaring the ends. Um, so let's see. First of all, we need to measure it to make sure we've got the right length of uh, pipe. We don't want to have to try and work with a huge length of pipe. It becomes very unmanageable. So simple, flexible tape measure. You're always going to measure around the outside of the bend. Never try to measure the inside because you'll get a shorter measurement. It's better to have a longer piece of hose than it is a shorter piece because you can't join it very easily. And don't matter if you measure too long, we can always cut it down after. So go around the outside edge. When you get to a change in the bend, come around the corner and continue around the outside edge. So this is coming out about 17. I'm going to add an extra couple of centimeters to allow for any mistakes. So we're going to do 19 centimeters. Use a little marker pen. To mark your 19 centimeters that's where we're going to cut two options of cutting tool the little thumb wheel one is fine it will do the same job but it's a little bit harder to work with you don't have a much as much leverage so if possible always use the larger tool you open it up to get the brake line inside the brake line is going to sit between the two rollers and the cutting blade has to line up with your mark. So clamp it down and you don't want to clamp it tight, just enough for it to bite onto the tube. Give it a couple of turns and then it will go loose. So then you tighten it a little bit more, give it a couple of turns, it will go loose. And you're going to repeat that process five or six times until it's cut through. Do not be tempted to do it up really tight to speed the job up because you're going to find it bites onto the line, onto the hose, so tightly that it's difficult to turn. Just be patient a little bit at a time and there you go. A nice clean cut, no burrs, just as it should be. 
So that's a piece of line we're going to work with. Now the next thing we need to decide is which end to start. Now if you've got a piece of hose um, that's shorter on one end than on the other, always start with a short end. The reason for that is because if you're going to use the professional tool, you'll find you can't do the flaring with the nut on there. So what we're going to do is first of all take the nut back on the straight piece of line in fact we don't even have to put it on at this point we can do the flaring first so that's what we're going to do we'll do the flaring so the flaring is going to go into the tool like so and you're going to leave about 1 to 1.5 millimeter extra over the end just enough to flare it you can hold that in position while you then get the second piece on. Oh, this one bit I missed out. Where are we? Right there. This goes in here. This one goes over the top. I'm going to have trouble holding that. I'm going to put it down on the table and then I can hold the pipe for you. You know, I don't know why I didn't think of that myself. Put that on there. Now I know that one of these screws is cross threaded, which is a bit of a pain. And this is almost a brand new kit, it was cross threaded when I got it. But we'll clamp that down and then we'll have to work a bit harder on this one. Get that clamp down nice and tight. Okay, now we need to use this piece. Now, if you look closely at the end, it's tapered in the middle. On one end, it goes in. On the other end, it flares out. For flaring, we're going to be using this end. And then we've got some grease here. And I've got no nails. Ah, there we go. Just going to put a small smear of grease around there. Only a small amount. You don't want it all going up the tube. It's just to help it slide. We're going to screw this in here. And then finally, we want the handle. And that's going to hold it for us easier. I think I should have got a screwdriver for this, but I might be able to use this Allen key. Just turn it, and you'll know when you've turned it enough because it won't turn anymore. Like so. Then undo it. Take that out. Now you're going to have to practice a little bit. You don't always get this right the first time with the amount of flare. And the unfortunate thing with this tool is you don't know if you've got it right until you've opened it up. You know, it's not far out, but I think we'll go just a touch more. So I'm just going to have to put that back in the tool. And we'll move it up just a little bit more. You don't want to flare it too much because if you flare it too much it will split. Oh, I missed a bit. Oh, you're supposed to spot this for me, Mitch. I'll do everything. As I say, this is a thing that you practice with until you get it right. If you get it right first time, you're very, very clever.
Now screw this back in. Let's see what we get this time. Can you not see how far you've done? No, you can't. Level? That's the unfortunate thing. You can't quite see. Now, of course, someone's going to be very clever, hopefully, and uh, leave a message saying, uh, you're doing something wrong. If you do this, you'll be able to see it or... There's a place to measure it there or whatever. I'm sure there's a technique to it, but everything I read suggests that it's trial and error. So I think that pretty much gets it. It's pretty darn close to the original. So that's that bit sorted. Now I'll show you why I like this tool compared to the other one that I showed you. If you use this tool, which is cheaper and easier, the problem you're going to have is it digs into the metal and leaves all these little uh, indentations and it doesn't look as good. And of course that in turn will promote rust because you've taken off the rust proof coating. And also this is what happens if you try to flare it too much. So don't be too eager, it only takes a few seconds just to open the tool and then try and flare it a bit more. So now what we're going to do is put our first end on. And that looks pretty darn good. Now we can take the original. And we're going to use this tool here. Now this is beautiful because what this allows us to do is um, put both pieces in together whenever we want to. I'm not going to need to do it with the first bend. Uh, but what I'm going to need to do with a first bend is judge what sort of bend we need. So this is obviously too big a, a circumference. You see it doesn't match the arch there. This one looks pretty close. That one's probably not enough, although it's only a partial bend, so it might be easier to use that. Now because that's such a tight corner there, we can't get both exactly on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is mark the centre of the bend. I'm hoping I get this right. What if you lay it down on the edge of the table before you do that? That way it's flat, as opposed to trying to guess an angle based on... You mean like angles. that? It's equivalent. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Now you're working with a flat. Okay, that makes sense. So we want the centre of that bend there, which will come out, I guess, about there. Now here's where the gloves come in handy, because unless you've got incredibly strong fingers, that's a very difficult bend to make on the end of the metal there. As you get further down, it's easier to do. So we'll stick that on and we'll put the center line in the center of the, uh, the tool there. Get your fingers as close to the bend as possible. And now we do a comparison. You're always going to overlay one on top of the other. Never try to measure from there or from the inside. It's on top. So we've got to go quite a bit more. I said you might be wanting to use the next one. You think so? I think so. Let me see what happens with this a bit more. Mm, I don't know. It's I'm going to stick with that a bit longer, I think. Behind it, you don't want to put too much pressure in one point when bending a pipe. That does make it sense. Yeah, but I don't want the curve to be too much. Ah, that's okay. Right, now you see I've started to go too much to one side. So what I'm going to do now is instead of putting it on the center line, I'm going to go slightly inside 
to try and take up that curve. It's difficult to hold this with gloves on. Yeah, I'm wishing I hadn't gone to that bigger one now, but we're very, very nearly there. Very close. That's very, very close. I'd say that small amount out is not worth even mentioning. So, now... We can put both in the machine at the same time if we want to. No, we can't. Oh yeah, I'm onto this one, aren't I? So that's on the same curvature. This one sticks out too far. So we want it to nestle, nestle. Is it nestle? Nestle. Nestle, straight in there. Now, I need more fingers, don't I? More fingers and thumbs. Now, when it comes to doing the next one, Again, you can't put that on the inside edge, even though that would make it easier for you, the bend will be wrong. It's always, you get them, um, what's the word, one on top of the other. Parallel? Like so, parallel, is that the word? Yeah, probably. I've got a funny feeling, because this is such a small piece we're working with, I may have to uh, mark the bend point again, rather than try to try to hold the two together so the point there would be use dry wipe not permanent um you can do <laughs> would make sense i guess so one on top of the other and we want the center of the curve so that's about there so i'm guessing about there and we're now changing the angle of the bend to there. So here's where copper is so much easier. But copper is not going to give you the same look. Nope, we're back to gloves. I don't normally have this much trouble. It would if it's the right angle. I don't know if the angle is right or not. I just happen to look at them and I'm like, doesn't this replicate the... No, you see the angle is different. And this is what I was yeah. saying about you need lots of different tools to get the right angles. So we're back to this one. Uh, that one. Around there. So we're going around there. Was we supposed to understand that mumbling? <laughs> Not really. It's me mumbling to myself. Okay, yep, so a little bit more around the corner there. I think I might look at some sort of modification to this tool to grip it as you go. Can't seem to get my fingers on such a small piece. <laughs> Okay, just a little bit more, I would say. <sighs> no, just a touch more. You want to bring this side round, I think, as opposed to moving this side. <sighs> Okay, how's that? There you go. Looks so good. we've got to do now, 
is get the end measurement so again it's one on top of the other not inside not outside one on top of the other and remember to allow another one 1.5 mil for the flaring I'd said two based on uh, your previous yeah I thought I did one first of all and needed oh, okay. a little bit more maybe nice. so again over to this tool into the rollers it's a very fiddly job it is a very fiddly job and it got even worse <clears throat> when you try to do the really big ones that have so many different angles very little of it is 90 degree angles and you found you're constantly like leg up and twisting round and but it's all possible and at the end of the day, these cars have got to be worth spending the time on to do the job really, really well. need more fingers so we're nearly nearly there don't forget to put your end on first because once it's flared it will be a closed loop then and no chance of uh, rectifying any problems I'm so glad you're here sometimes Mitch because you do make the life a bit easier for me because I forget so many things now so what do you reckon about there looks good Although you've got this upside down, unfortunately, is it only it's threaded only on one half, isn't it? Yes. Yep. So you've got this upside down. <laughs> well done. <laughs> what would I do without you? You'd have bought this. That might be a little too much. I reckon that's about right. We'll find that's out. Good. I'll take the one that isn't damaged on the thread first. Do, do, do. So what is this part specifically? Where, where is this one located on the car? Uh, this one I believe is the rear brakes just before the hub. Okay, get that in there. Do you need to be worried about the grease being in the lines potentially? Yeah, that's why I said only put on a very very tiny smear so it doesn't go in. recommend to use for cleaning it up? Uh, brake cleaner. Did that damage the coating? No, no it's designed for it. Okay, let's see what we've got. Hopefully it's perfection but knowing these videos they rarely go perfectly because you're always in such a rush you don't take the time like you would with uh, doing it on your own. We'll see. Please be good to me. That looks pretty darn good. That's very good. Pretty darn good indeed. So I think. You put that on your car and it's going to be a brave man that says that's not a genuine part. Bearing in mind the original ones had these yellow ends rather than the silver ends. So guys, 
that's how you do it and that's how you do it good so I've got plenty more of these to do um, there was one thing I was going to show you oh I think I did show you uh, what happens to the ends if you use this tool yeah. I did show you that is there anything else I need to show you I didn't show you how to use these because quite frankly they're more work than they're worth they're going to cost you a lot more money if you want a full set I'm sure there's someone out there that's going to tell you like I said different techniques whatever of doing it but for me I've really enjoyed using this tool um, and I should perhaps contact the manufacturer and see if they want to give me some sort of promotion or whatever but I've been really impressed with the fact that I can make just about any brake line any shape with this one tool um, it's so much easier and where it does work really well is when you get into these really big lines you can lay one on top of the other and bend the two to get the perfect bend you bend the two or bend one over the top of the other one and it gives you the exact shape every single time so look not the best video in the world but i think i've done a, a good demonstration on how you can make a perfect reproduction of the original brake line it looks like the original brake line i'm very very picky with these cars and i'm happy with those so i hope you will be too i hope it's been of use for you so you don't buy tools that you don't need or don't want or won't give you the quality that you want um, and that's it for this video please don't forget to read the message at the end um, it has saved me some problems and you some problems thanks very much for watching thanks for the patrons for your support and uh, i hope you get something out of this too see you on the next video